What's going on all my YouTube buddies? It's me Jacob with another video and today I will be taking a look at the comedy What Women Want as part of my series Hashtag 52 Films by Women. If you're new to my channel, I do movie reviews, TV reviews, trailer reactions, and other fun stuff along the way. And if you enjoyed this video, I consider click that subscribe button and click the little bell next to it to be notified of future videos. So What Women Want was released in 2000. It was directed by Nancy Myers, and just looking at her filmography, she's best known for directing comedies and romantic comedies other movies she directed included the remake of the parent trap she also directed something's gotta give and the intern just to name a few what women want stars mel gibson as advertising executive nick marshall who is as cocky as they come but what happens to a chauvinistic guy when he can suddenly hear what women are thinking Nick gets passed over for a promotion, but after an accident enables him to hear women's thoughts, he puts his newfound talent to work against Darcy, played by Helen Hunt, his new boss, who seems to be infatuated with him. So the only reason I saw what women want, one, because it was directed by a woman, of course, and two, recently got gender swapped into the remake What Men Want, which that premise intrigued me just as well, so I figured... Hey, I better see the original first. And as far as this movie goes, I mean, it's fine. I do like the premise of the film on paper about a sexist guy who ends up reading women's thoughts. And I guess Mel Gibson's casting, I guess, is a little questionable because of some of his personal statements and stuff that's caused him a little bit of controversy over the years. But as him in the film... I mean, he still, he proved he can be a comedic lead, which I wasn't expecting, because he's usually great as an action star or a dramatic actor, so it was different seeing him do something more comedic and it, have it still work. I also like the fact that you had someone like Nancy Myers who directed this film, so she can tackle, you know, such a premise and have it feel genuine, not all of the movie works but it was nice to see her put her stamp on the premise or something like that the movie does have a great cast i do like the chemistry between mel gibson and helen hunt they do work off each other very nicely uh the other people involved in the film you have alan alda is in the film as uh, Mel Gibson's boss and he, he even had supporting performances from actresses like Sarah Paulson and Judy Greer and even Marissa Tomei so you had some good people involved in this film and I, I, I did get some good laughs out of this movie I'm not gonna lie uh, I think the funniest part of the film is seeing Mel Gibson get electrocuted which causes him to hear women's thoughts he gets electrocuted in a freak accident and it happens to him several times throughout the film. I've been like, you know, some of the thoughts you hear, I think, do get a good laugh. I don't, obviously, I don't know if the thoughts are true or not, being, obviously, I'm not a woman, but I, I definitely found a lot of it enjoy, I guess, enjoyably funny. Yeah, I can definitely see the. I guess the male ego in the film, and and I can definitely see a lot of people falling in the same type as Mel Gibson's character. And I think uh, for those people, I think, I guess they can learn something out of this movie. But this movie does have a lot of problems, though. A lot of my issues with the film deal with the fact that because Mel Gibson's character is so unlikable, it's hard to root for him for most of the film. In fact, even when he starts hearing women's thoughts, instead of using it for the longest time to help him be a better person, he uses it to try to sabotage Helen, Helen Hunt's character, which he blamed her for taking his or stealing his promotion. And that kind of rubbed me off the wrong way, honestly. That was the main plot thread. 
And there were other aspects throughout the film too that did leave a sour taste in my mouth as well. I especially hated the way they treated Marissa Tomei's character in the film. For instance, I didn't I didn't like the way they wrote that plot thread out cuz it makes both characters look bad without getting into spoilers and when they when they dived into the way they were writing the humor. Yeah, I really question why they thought that was a good idea. I don't know if you can get away with it at that time, but if you had done a joke like that now without going into the spoilers, man, that'd be like this toxic backlash or something like that. Like I said, the the actions in the film, it is a little dated at times. I also think the film is extremely predictable. Like, when you hear the premise of what women want, it does kind of sound like a Hallmark Lifetime film, but it definitely has quality cinematic filmmaking, and I think some of the humor is obviously a step above Hallmark. But it does follow the same tropes as most romantic comedies. And even some of the music choices were kind of predictable too. Like there's a scene in the film where Mel Gibson is shopping, is uh, takes his daughter shopping for a prom dress, and the song playing in the background, considering the film is called "What Women Want," is "What a Girl Wants" by Christina Aguilera. That's as predictable as they come. My other issue with the film, I feel like it's 30 minutes too long for a comedy of its type. It didn't need to be two hours. Uh, I think you could have cut some, I think some of the more unlikable aspects of the storytelling, chopped that up a little bit, and cut to the meat of the story, which is Mel Gibson learning to be a better person. I think if they had done that, I probably would have bumped the rating up a little bit, but as is, I had fun with it. I, besides the premise, I like the premise enough. I think the cast worked best with the material they were given. And I did get some good laughs, even though Mel Gibson's character, like I said, is very hard to root for for a good majority of the film. But at the end of the day, I'm still going to give the film a solid 3.5 out of 5. I do think it shows Nancy Meyer's strengths as a director. Even I don't... This was not her script, but she did a good job working off somebody else's script. And I had fun with it for the most part. On the underpoint scale, I'm going to give it a 65 out of 100. So that was my review of What Women Want. This was the 10th installment in my series of movies directed by women. It's actually a worldwide movement to try to give recognition to women directors in the business and try to give them a little bit of a creative boost. And I've enjoyed this project so far and if you want to help I'll leave a link down in the description below. You can sign a little petition and yeah watch as many female directed movies as you can. It's I'm, I'm, I've been enjoying this so far, I'm not going to lie. If you've seen What Women Want, please let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But please be respectful and considerate of others, especially a movie that kind of tackles gender politics, I guess. I don't want trolls on this video. That's not good. No! If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button for more content, and click the little bell next to it to be notified of future videos. Besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, trailer reactions, and other fun stuff along the way. Definitely have some more videos coming for you soon. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!